what a discount, 50% uh, of what you hear everybody in my profession says, because we have been, what is the right word? We've been so wrong this year. I mean, we thought that Martha Copley was going to be Scott Brown. Nobody thought Lisa Murkowski was going to lose. And I don't know who's going to turn out. In these midterm elections, you know, what looks like a wave is really powered by the fact that a certain kind of electorate turns out, other people stay home. So the thing that, I done, I, that I've done this time, because every year for the last five presidential cycles, I have looked at the ads. What it messages each, each party and each, each set of candidates trying to put out. And even being down here, I saw Ed last night uh, where the Democratic candidate was being accused of, he's for Obama and he's not for you. So you got the Republicans running against Obama, you got the Republicans running against Pelosi, you got a fair number of Democrats running away from Pelosi. And then just in the last week, and I wrote about this for the Daily Beast, you have Democratic Party ads, not candidate ads, and so the candidate can say, well, you know, I don't have any control over this, coming in and not talking about the budget, not talking about health care, going after certain Republican candidates on a very personal basis, yeah. basically painting them oh, as unethical sleaze They're not doing that, are they? Absolutely. They're running negative ads out there, Howie? Oh, <laughs> my God. There are negative no, ads. Hold on. Hold on, James. There are negative <laughs> ads every cycle. Both sides use them, and they work, and I'm not decrying You're them. You're talking about Jack Conway against Rand Paul in Kentucky. Well, right? there is that. There is an ad against Linda McMahon in, in Connecticut that says basically all these wrestlers died, and it's her fault. Uh, there's an ad against some guy saying he threatened his wife uh, with a knife when in a divorce case was 10 years ago. When your candidates are using those kind of personal attacks, I'm not saying it's not fair game. What I am saying is it tells me they don't want to run on the main issues. They're trying to find another way in. But there's no question that a lot of these other uh, matters about innovation, about how we compete with China, uh, are not getting the kind of attention they should. I partially blame the media because, you know, leaving aside Christine O'Donnell, I mean, what are the two things you know about the races in California. You know that Jerry Brown's aide called Meg, Whit Meg Whitten a whore, and you know that Carly Fiorina said Barbara Boxer had bad hair. I mean, we do sort of have a tendency to be mesmerized by these little shiny things that are so much fun to kick around, but to some extent, you have to blame the candidates, but they are trying to get themselves elected, and if they want to talk about innovation, and they want to talk about the budget, and they want to talk about making tough choices, they inevitably, if they're intellectually honest, also have to talk about sacrifice and pain, and politicians most notably don't like to do that. So they sweep things like, you know, what are we going to do about Social Security under the rug?